Okay, let us start the class, please. Uh, a few minutes of meditation. So, correct yourself. Do one minute first, please. Mm, yes. That's, that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. Okay, two minutes, please.
Thank you. So um, today we talk about the mindfulness in intimacy and marital relationship or any kind of relationship. I think it's also practical if you um, good know how to utilize mindfulness um, and probably all of us may have some difficulties, right? In some sort of uh, relationship, right? With our family members, with our friends, uh, whoever. I think this is more beneficial and that um, we need to deal with. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so let's, let's start with number one. Uh, this price, how to be mindful with your partner. Yeah, please. Um, what I read, it seemed to be very similar on how to be mindful with yourself. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, paying a, like paying attention to the present moment, um, acceptance, non-judgment. Okay. Rather than your own emotions, it's how you interact with the person that's in front of you. Like you said, it doesn't have to be your spouse or your partner, it could be your child or a friend or whatever. But um, with a partner type relationship, like a long term one, it sure. can be that's more different. challenging, I guess, because you mm -hmm. tend to get to know one another really well. And so then you take certain things for like granted or. Mm -hmm. You just learn certain patterns, I think, behavioral yeah. patterns, especially if you weren't like raised in the mindfulness type environment. Like mindfulness is new, like it's new to me. Um, it's different because you have different patterns of communication between the partners. Mm -hmm. So you have to train yourself to be mindful. So one of the ways that um, they said you could be mindful is um, like when you're having a conversation with someone like my spouse or whatever, to be in that moment, like in that conversation, listening to actually what they say. Because a lot of times when you're in relationships, they might say something that makes you think of something else, and then that's what you think about. Or you don't like what they're saying, so you don't want to listen to what they're saying, so you're thinking about something else. Or sometimes you, you'll think of what you're going to say back to them rather than listening to what they're saying at that moment. So it's, it's very similar to your own emotions where you're worrying about the future or the past. It's the same exact thing, except instead of dealing with yourself, you're dealing with the person in front of you. And um, also if you're real like busy or whatever, because people who are in relationships usually are maintaining a household together or at least sharing bills or something. So both people are usually really busy. So you don't have a lot of time, like quality time together. You might just see each other in passing, you know. In the morning, I see in the evening, but I don't stay in the whole rest of the day. So you don't have a lot of time together to be mindful of one another. And a lot of times you're sitting around and it could be both of you with your phone or whatever, or watching TV. Nobody's really talking to the person. So one of the ways they said is to just stop and like have a conversation and look at each other and listen to one another and focus on what's being said because if you can truly listen to someone, then you can respond to just that, be in that moment, and then of course you have to do it without judgment, which is a whole other difficulty. Right? But I think the key is learning to be mindful with yourself first, because then if you cannot judge your own emotions, then you're going to be able to not judge other people's emotions. I mean, that's just a little bit of what you know goes into it, but there, there's a lot. I think that not reacting to the emotion, not judging the emotion, the person comes at you all angry. Not judging it, just listen, accept that that's their feeling at the moment, and then respond uh, like mindfully rather than reacting. I remember the steps that I had to face those people, what you do, just do some stuff. I think one of it was like using your breathing techniques to remind yourself that you're in the present um, and thinking before you speak. Just to blurt out. I guess kind of combining your your um, emotion, like using the wise mind, okay, right? Like yeah. being reasonable and emotional, like combining it rather than just reacting. Which 
a lot of times we say what right pops in our head, right? Mm -hmm. And that might not be the, what you should say. You might want to wait and think about and be mindful about what comes out of your mouth. Yeah. So somehow, um, talking about the partners, we have short term, long term, or medium size, right? <laughs> <laughs> so depend, right? Depend on what kind of partner we may have. Short term, well, we may have good time together, right? Medium term is good, but long term is, like you say, this sometimes is burden too. Right, and plus when you live together for many years, you know each other habitual patterns. The time does they open them out, you know what they're going to talk. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. According to their emotion, according to some particular situation. Right? So let's say if um, if you forget to cook um, dinner for him, you know how is the jack, right? Mm -hmm. So let me, can you give some example the difference between um, the I mean that um, the normal direction of the couples to the mindful uh, application when we deal with our partners, long term partners. Sure. Yeah, with your experience. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. they can know. So they get ready to go. <laughs> Did I feel soon? <laughs> okay, I have I actually have a very recent example. Okay. I was being mindful today. Oh, okay. So, uh, and I was successful, thank goodness. Um, it was it was hit or miss. I don't know. I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I'm not, as I've told you before, I'm not very patient, mm -hmm. and um, my husband's not super like motivated, like or the opposite. I'm like, go 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 go, get stuff done. I make a list, check 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 check, and he's like. Uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> he's like, for, like you know, like in the moment guy, right? Uh -huh. He's like, I'll do it, you know, don't worry, it'll get done, you know. And I'm like, dude, seriously, it needs to get done, right? <laughs> like, you know, like nine months ago, like really behind <laughs> schedule here. You know? And so, and that's my normal, like, like right now there's one thing I've been waiting for, and it's pretty important. And I've been like, okay, every day trying to like, Gently remind him, you know, we really probably should get this done. And then, well, here's a good reason why it should be done. And I'm like, normally I would be more like, dude, seriously, you gotta do this. If you don't do this, blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> and I'm real, you know, pushy. Um, so this time I'm like, okay, but that never helps because you just will stonewall the more pushy I am. So like the longer it takes. So I'm like, okay, how am I gonna do this? This is actually super duper important. So I really need to like get him to do it without being all, you know, pushy. So how can I be like? mindful and like be helpful without being pushy. So I woke up this morning feeling emotions of irritability and annoyance with the situation. Like first as soon as I woke up I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so annoying, this has to happen. I'm like, okay. So while I was doing my chores for my animals, I was being how can I do this mindfully? I need to be like I need to do my normal way because that's not gonna work. So I need to be like mindful and like, okay. So I was thinking back to a conversation we had about it yesterday. And something he had said that he needed to get it done, I was like, okay, so that's something he said that he needed. Well, maybe I can, like, try to help. So I made a phone call. But it's like a part for something we're working on. So I, I made a phone call about this part that we need. And then I called him. And I said, hey, you said you needed a part. So I called, and then they can do it for about this much. He's like, oh, hey, thanks. That's really helpful. I'll get right on that. And I'm like, okay, well, thanks. Have a good day. And then I'm on the phone. So I think that was being mindful because I didn't like just rah, 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 you know, get it done. So I like tried to think of a way to help him without being like, why aren't you getting it done? So I'm really trying to not go there. Sometimes if uh, you remind people too much, right, they may feel this, you annoy them, right? Yes. He's <laughs> <laughs> just very annoyed when yeah. I remind him. Uh, it's yeah. not easy. Uh, so when... Yeah. When they they see our face, right? They, they would step out yeah. of the room, right? Yeah. So that's that's normal. Okay. Anyway, that's good. Thank you, and thanks for your experience. No um, so who have uh, you have family already? You, you see, me? you still see, me? Kyle, and you too, right? <laughs> Yeah. Technically, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Let's see. Let's see to hear from your experience too. Let's see number two. Yes. Oh, that's all your 
Oh, which one? I which? did the wrong one. That's okay. Which one you do? Which one you do? Um, I did number four. Oh, that's okay. Who does number two? No one. That's okay. <laughs> Describe how mindfulness, how how to do mindful understanding okay. validation. In this article, have you read this article? I remember I told you mindful living, mindful loving. Yeah. Uh, so I based upon this this articles to write uh, the question. So what do you think about how to develop the mindful understanding first? How? I think mindfulness teaches you to be empathetic. Okay. And um, not to just to focus on the present, but that doesn't always mean just focus on yourself. You can focus on the present and still include other people in that. Mm -hmm. um, how they're feeling, how they're reacting, and things happening. Mm -hmm. Remember the time that um, we always think about our emotion. We don't recognize, we don't understand why they have that kind of reaction. We don't, we don't know why they have that kind of emotion, right? When they, when we yell to them, of course, they may cry, they may react aggressively, and so forth. We don't. Pay attention on that kind of feeling, but we pay attention ourselves. Make sense? So that's why we have to kind of conflict all the times. And so we have to understand. Let's say when they work, uh, when they um, go home from work, and if they have hard time at work, at the companies, and they stress out too much, and if we know why. If we know why they uh, they have hard time at work. It's, we, we can make calm their mind. Like your case, right? You understand he may need to get something. So you help him out. That's understanding. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's not easy. Sometimes we take, again, we take them for granted but that we don't care. We always think that they need to understand us. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But we expect them to understand us. Yeah. We may not be understanding them. Yeah, that's the point. It's always we think about ourselves. We expect that they understand us, but but in return we don't want to pay attention about them, about their feeling. So that is what sometimes is miscommunication there. That's where conflict comes from, right? And so you have any experience for that misunderstanding, the miscommunication, and you could not resolve the problem? Can you share? One example. <laughs> um, my boyfriend's bad about taking things that I say the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And so I've tried really hard to just word things a certain way. Like I used to feel like I had to walk on the eggshells sometimes, but not anymore because now I just I know how to word things so that mm -hmm. we don't get an argument over it because sometimes he'll just take things the wrong way. And he won't admit it, but he's a really sensitive person and he gets his feelings hurt really easy. So mm -hmm. um, sometimes if he'll take something the wrong way, then he'll get really upset. Mm -hmm. And like, if we're going to go somewhere, like he won't want to go anymore. And he'll get all upset and want to just go outside and work on his car or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I've learned now how yeah. to deal with it. Yeah, that's, that's one of the important is when you go out, right? For a lady, you may like to go to the shopping. For the for the men, they may like to buy some stuff, fix in the car, right? So we have to have the kind of compromise, right? Otherwise, if you grab him along with you to the shop, it's boring. Vice versa, if you grab her to the the uh, <coughs> auto shop, it's boring for her and so forth. So we have to have some kind of understanding and compromising, and otherwise. Um, it's boring, and one party we go out, and other one we stay home, and this this that create what called separation, right? And and create more more problems. And um, um, most of the time, when they advise the couples that um, if you live together, share, especially share your bank account. If you have some kind of a separation. There's more momentum. This is more. Uh, this is more chance, right, for you to to separate. If you don't share, but, uh, the moment that you make a commitment to live under the same roof, 
you have to share. All captains, physically, mentally, and spiritually, and so forth. If you don't share, sooner or later, you break out easily. How about you have any experience about that? Not yet? No. Kind of? Yes? Uh, my ex boyfriend, his dad wouldn't um, share his bank account with his then stepmom. Okay, and what happened? We talked about that a lot. And, uh, and at the time, I thought, like, oh, I understand that. Like, you want to have your own money. Mm-hmm. You don't want to have to feel like just because you're married, you have to share everything mm-hmm. because, you know, you make that money on your own and that makes you feel independent and you don't have to worry about that stuff. Um, but the push ups were easy. <laughs> and, you know, whenever it wasn't working, it ended. Yeah, you have to share and understand. Well, Sometimes we have to um, give all the party, all the partners, the flexibilities to. Anyway, we talk about that more. Okay. Um, how about what does it mean by validation? You have, you have to have a guy. Valid- um, yes. What's it mean? Like validating your own feelings. Like I think I did that when we were talking about emotions. Like how you would want to say it makes sense to feel this way rather than to say it's silly to feel this way. Like you mentioned, when you ordered part for him, he validate your help. Yes. He happy. Yes, and I and was careful not to stay on the phone too long, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Trying to turn the yeah. tide the wrong way. Uh, so yeah. you understand his need, and he validate that kind of uh, assistant or help. Yeah. They appreciate that too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's validation. So that's need to understand and validate whatever we do. Or all the, all the party, all the party do for us. Okay, number three. Who does number three? Jennifer? Oh, she's not here. Uh, how about this price? How to develop my full million of needs? What do you think? What kind of needs that our partners, our spouse, our friends uh, needs? What do you think? I mean, I guess any kind of need. Yes. Uh-huh. Can can you fulfill their all their needs? No. Why not? Um, because a lot of needs that we have can't be fulfilled by other people. Yeah. There's like I have emotional or spiritual or whatever needs. Those can't be fulfilled by another person. Those have to be. I have to have responsibility for those. Yeah. I think sometimes though people in relationships think they can fulfill those types of needs for other people and they're wrong. They can't. Mm-hmm. Also, I think people expect their partners to fulfill needs that they can't, and I think that's kind of a problem. I think mindful meaning of needs can only be things you can actually help with. Like, this laundry's in the washer, and he's gone, and he needs his clothes dry. I mean, I can see that he, if they're in the washer, clearly he needs them to dry, and mm-hmm. I'm there, so why not throw them in the dryer for him, right? Mm-hmm. That will help him have dry clothes when he gets back, mm-hmm. and he didn't have to ask, you know, for a little help with that. Obviously, something he needs. So that's something that you can help with without trying to help somebody that you can't. Sure. Like you can't make somebody be happy with themselves. You can't help somebody with that. That's their own thing. But you can try to be nice to them okay. when they're not happy. Yeah. Uh, for the man, uh, if the car broke down, right? You know, you you have the responsibility to take care of the car, right? Uh, you take care of the cars. When it's broke down, that's, that's the expectation, right? Uh, so, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know how to fix the car? What? You know how to fix the car? No, I don't have a car. Okay. So, again, it's in general, right? In general, uh, the lady expect um, the man do the heavy stuff, right? Fixing the car. Fix the house around, right? You do that too sometimes? Uh, yeah, I could probably fix a house before I could fix a car. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, by voice, um, uh, the man expect the lady, right, to pay for the food, to cook for the food, 
Is yeah. it unfair? Yeah, you cook a lot of food, yeah. He does? Yeah. Oh, he does not, not much. Not much. Sometimes, I mean, he used to cook pretty well. Right now, he's not cooking. Because of you? I don't know. No, okay. I think he's like, a, if he's in the mood, he'll just cook. He doesn't uh, plan. Like, he doesn't plan ahead. I'm a planner. Uh, I plan. He doesn't yeah. plan. So, <laughs> if he feels like cooking that day, then he'll just cook, right? But if he doesn't feel like it, then he won't cook. So, apparently, he hasn't felt like it for a while. So, so, <laughs> yeah, so let me go back to the, you can say the fundamental question. Why do you need your partner? Why do you need your partner? Why do you need your partner instead of instead of living by yourself? That's an excellent question. That's a fundamental <laughs> question. Yeah, right? If you understand that, you would understand this question, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. We don't need them. We choose to be with them. You don't need them. You sure? I think we yeah, have emotional needs, like the need to be loved and the need to be uh, something that we can rely on. Mm-hmm. I guess that's too. Well, I don't need to be loved. I mean, it's not technically maybe. I guess it's mm-hmm. not necessarily a set in stone need. Like there's a different kind of like. Um, studies of like the needs, like I think it was Maslow who had the kind of hierarchy of uh-huh. needs, and like um, I forget where love was at, it may have been like kind of the middle there. Yeah. But, um, but I, I, I mean, I think we all probably have a need to be loved and wanted, kind of. I think the, uh, those times of number five, you know, the mental state most of the time, it's more fun to go through life mm-hmm. most of the time. Yeah. Mm. So, I just we we mentioned like some people don't like living with other people. They like having relationships, but they really value that independence and providing themselves with the constant um, mm. the constant love and things that we typically get from other people. They like to go home and be alone and have like. Kind of a contemplative, quiet life, and then go out and see their friends and have relationships separate. Um, I don't, but I don't know if that means that those are things we need because they still go out. But okay, about yeah. they're allowed to choose to be alone. You can't just sit and be bored all the time. You need someone else with different ideas and mm-hmm. different thoughts and wanting to do different things. That's why it's hard to be with someone that is exactly like you. They like everything the same as you. You're going to be bored and weak because they can't bring anything new to the table. They can't show you anything new. They can't take you new places or give you new perspectives on anything. And I think that usually that ends up in a relationship because friendships can do that too. But I think it ends up in a relationship because what they are talking about you need a little bit more than just the fun. But that's where Drady conflicts. You want to go to the east and you want to go to the west. That's that's not the aspect. Compromise. Yeah, you can compromise. That's if you don't want to do the new things that they're showing you, then you don't have to or you can compromise. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I think it would just be really boring to, be yeah. to do everything that you want to do. Yeah, actually number 10, there's some articles. Let's talk about how to enhance, mm-hmm. how mindfulness <laughs> base enhance relationship. They According to some research, they say that people look for similarities. Yeah. People work for similarities. Yeah. And in the mindfulness way of life, we, even we don't have that kind of similarity, we can adapt to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just want similarities and like your values. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. When I was walking, I was walking from St. James Park here the other day, and I was noticing all the couple look so much alike. And you, I mean, you hear that all the time. Couple, couple, like one couple had all the same piercings, almost the same clothes on, and then another couple like was like dressed in like you know all like J Crew. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's go back. What do you think? Again, go back to that fundamental question, right? Why do we need a partner? If you solve that, you would understand that to fulfill the need of your partner. Is that right? What do you think? 
Why? Why? For me, it comes back to love. Uh, I, I mean, it comes back to love. Okay. Me, to be loved and reciprocate love. Okay. okay. <laughs> How about all those? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Many a time I thought, I do not need you. You're too much trouble. <laughs> oh, okay. But okay. I, I'm a little bitter. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. I'm not very mindful okay. about it. How about others? Any experience? I'm not with her. Oh, really? Okay. 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 I feel like um, when I'm in a relationship, it's the same I don't know if I would use the word need. Um, mm. I, I guess, you know, I don't know, I can come to terms with the word need because yeah, go ahead. need doesn't mean, need doesn't have to mean that, um, that like you can't live without the person. It just means that like we have basic needs and maybe that person isn't the person who fulfills that need but they can't be. So that person isn't the need, but there is a need for love, or there is a need for like um, sex, or there's a need for understanding, compassion, all these things, somebody close to talk to. Um, and lots of people get those needs in different ways. They don't have to be with another person to fulfill those needs, but I think that many people do choose to have another person because that's just their preference. And yeah, what happens if someone is so greedy they want other parties, other partners to fulfill every need they want to have? This happens, right? What happens when somebody... if, let's say if if the husband or wives ask to ask too much from from other the partners? I think it creates a separation. Although they're yeah. asking to like be together more, to do more things, it's going to make the person giving all the time mm-hmm. tired of giving all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, especially uh, if you have children, right? You meet uh, the lady. You need to spend more time, right? As a mother, you like you have, you need time to spend for your children, but your husband requires that. Ask you yet, you need to be with him all the time. It's stress out, right? Uh, and and that goes uh, if uh, Bob, uh, either one of you are so busy at work, right? Um, to survive, to earn income to survive. But um, let's say um, one partner asks uh, to have lunch during the break, or uh, uh, to have dinner, or go out at night, and so far, it may be exhausted. Is that right? Uh, you have that experience? Being exhausted? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How? Can you give one example? Um, well, mm. I, like I said, I tend to be motivated, so I tend to do a lot of stuff. So mm-hmm. I work, I go to school. Mm-hmm. I have kids. And even though they're 18, we still spend quite a bit of time together, kids and I. Um, so, yeah, a lot of times I'm like, hey, you want to go to town? Like, I will have just drove home from Louisville because I work in Louisville and I live an hour that way. I'll get home. Do you want to go to town? Not really, because I just got back from town. You know, I want to just be at home. And they'll be like, you don't want to spend time with me. Well, I'll spend time with you here, but I don't want to go to town, especially like the Walmart or something. I don't want to go. You know. So yeah, I, I just come home. I'll be tired. And like, I still have to cook dinner, take care of the animals, you know, wash the dishes. And how am I going to fit going to town in there? Because I have three hours to get all this stuff done. There's no way I can go to town because that's going to take an hour and a half. I can't do it. Sorry. So yeah. That's yeah. So go, yeah. So go back uh, to the question that is, at first we need to be mindful what we need, right? And we need to be mindful what they need. So at that what if we understand that have needs, it's easy for us to fulfill our needs as well as helping that partner. Otherwise, sometimes when we may give the wrong needs too, right? We may give the wrong assistance. They, that they may need, they may not need to to have, right? Um, 
how do you know? Okay, so you, we have to be mindful of our own needs and meet our own needs so mm -hmm. that we, we know can be that. happy, fulfilled people and mm -hmm. be decent towards other people and show compassion and love. Mm -hmm. But what if our needs and their needs are not the same? Right? You can't say, what if you can't meet your need and meet their need? Mm -hmm. How do you choose? Do you pick you first? I was just reading, I have the PowerPoint up here. And we talked about this in class before. Like, there's um, a quiz online that was developed by a relationship psychologist, or I, I forget her exact title, but it's called like the the love quiz, or, or you just you figure out what your love needs are. So mm -hmm. um, if they need something else, then yeah. you need if they need something else than you, then you figure out what their needs are. They figure out what yours are, and you try to compromise, compromise or um, you you might have to change your behaviors and your patterns mm -hmm. uh, and realize that like they experience love differently than you. And yeah, so be taken into account. plus depend upon uh, each individual outlook too, right? Let's us go back to uh, what you call the um, What do you call that one? What type of pyramid? Right? So, let me see here. Okay, here. Bring food, water, and so forth. This is the basic one. The safety. Friendship, self-esteem, self-assuration. So everyone has different needs. Is that right? So it depends. Sometimes sometime our partner may need you to fulfill this one, but not this one. But not up to the spiritual life, right? Sometimes um, your husband may not like to go to the church or even the temple. This is not necessary for them. They get like to hang out with people to have a beer and so I have conversation or have a physical call, whichever. So depend, depend. So especially if you develop, develop a long term relationship, right? Like a husband and wife. So you, of course, definitely before you you make a kind of commitment, you know, you know what they they need, right? All right. Yeah, that's okay. So, so the more you live with them, the more you know their needs, right? So, so again, like go, go back to your. You don't know. I don't needs? agree. No. Why not? Because the okay, if you've been together a very long time, okay, people change over time. Oh, okay. Both sides change over okay. time. Okay. So yes, you do learn someone's personality and you learn how their needs and you learn, like you know what they're going to say before they say it, but then at certain times in their life, their needs totally change, mm -hmm. like they shift, and then you have to relearn. And sometimes that can be good, and sometimes it's just exhausting, and sometimes you just don't even want to try to relearn it again. <laughs> again? Really? I feel like it's just like a lot of changing, like especially at different points of age, right? Mm -hmm. Like your 30s, right. and then like your 40s. Like That's why. Things change, and so yeah. then it makes it really challenging, because like you have to keep up with your own needs and theirs. That's kind of complicated, especially with there's no way you're going to change at the same time either, right? Because men and women are mature and grow mm -hmm. and learn at different paces. So it's like, you know, it's not like you're both going like this, right? It's all backwards. Yeah. We have to talk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we have to talk to each other a lot. Always communicate. That makes it easier when things are changing. So. Yeah, thank you. So we go back to our own needs, right? Sometimes we we could not fulfill all of that, all this kind of needs. That's why we need our partners to help us to fulfill the empty space. Is that right? And if our partner could not fill in some kind of this space, right? This kind of needs, sometimes it's just incompatible. Is that right? We may look for a different one if we still mature of the relationship. But if we tied up already, it's too late. 
right? It's hard. That's why divorce happening, right? So the pain. That's why when you're still young, you need to take time to know your own needs first, to see the needs of your partner, whether it's compatible, or whether you can handle or not. Otherwise, sometimes one party just uh, um, demand too much, right? You be exhausted, right? And you could, you may not handle that type of relationship, right? So you, you have need to uh, first understand what you need, and later on to see whether that type of partners could um, share a few in the um, this fight for you, right? Whether money, whether um, uh, uh, health, and so forth, right? But sometimes people um, may not. Um, need the whole thing. I mean, may just need only one or two. Let's say, as much as you rich man, that's okay with me, right? And as much as you love me, that's fine with me. So it depends. Depend upon your partner uh, needs. So you need to fulfill that. We need to be mindful of that. Okay. Let's go back to um, number four. Number four. Oh, oh, oh you? Yeah. Yeah. What? Trust, how can you develop mindful trust and respect? Well, I think one of the big ones is remembering promises. Remembering mm -hmm. um, to fulfill the things that you say you're going to do when you're going to do it. When you're mindful, I found that when I'm mindful, it's much easier for me to remember a lot of things that are in my short term memory and I lose them. But when I really focus on what's going on in the moment, I can figure out a way to Being in the moment, um, remembering you said this, you need to do it, even if you don't need to do it. Um, one thing that's from the PowerPoints that you showed, um, Byron, too, is that the decisions that you make are not your character traits. So um, you need to respect your partner by following through with things that you say you're going to do, and you can't make the excuse of that's just not the way that I am because you said you were going to do it. It's just, it's a decision. It's not the way that you are. And I think a lot of people will get stuck in that pattern of thinking that you can't change or you can't do what's best for the relationship because it's not who you are because that's a um, major excuse. Uh, having good manners, treating others with consideration, those are pretty basic So often we forget about what we forget what integrity means and the fact that um, your relationship can be affected by the things that you say when you're not with that person. We always focus on how we are with that person when we're with them, and then when we go out into the world, and like the things that we say in this class or the things that we say online, especially the other person um, who maybe we're interested in. Even friendships, I think, um, not giving away too much about how you, the things that are going on in your relationship, not disrespecting that trust. Um, if this happened between us and not between anybody else, so maybe don't share that. Mm -hmm. It's important to figure out what you can and cannot share with others.
monitor yourself to assure you are treating your partner better than you treat strangers or others. So don't have that be your level of understanding or compassion. Um, so I don't think it's a good idea. Like if you're having a bad day, you might take that out on like people who are driving in the car next to you and ice cream. You might be one of those people who loves road rage. That doesn't mean it's okay to go home and take out your very mm -hmm. different relationship, obviously, and um, knowing the difference between um, how you treat your strangers and how you treat your partner is very important. Um, so compartmentalizing is important. Make sure your best actions are for your partner first. That was. Talking about the choice, sometimes it's challenge too, especially um, before you decide to get married with someone else, you may have some short-term relationship already, is that right? And after you got married, and of course, sometimes you may cut off that kind of short-term relationship, but sometimes you still maintain, right? And let's say if your husband or wife see you go out with that, that friends, that former friends, close friends, mm -hmm. can could they trust you? It, of course, depend upon depend upon your husband, right? But if if we see our partners go out with their old former friends, could we trust them? That's the question. Is that right? Sometimes it's a bit complicated. Yeah. It's not not easy. Trust isn't always based on the people involved. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You can have trust issues that yeah. go beyond that, the person you have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. um, so it might not have anything to do with that person, whether or not they're trustworthy, but maybe you have been mistreated in the past that you assume that somebody else is going to do it. Mm -hmm. So that takes a lot of self control and a lot of mm -hmm. mindfulness yeah. to be in the moment. And uh, you know, sometimes people uh, get married uh, in short periods of time without um, having much contemplations. Com Is that right? And because, probably because of some reason that that's uh, pushed them into that situation that they have to get, to get married with this person, that person, right? Mm -hmm. So when they and when they are in that kind of relationship, it's not easy to for them to get out. But they still maintain uh, the former relationship. That's where when marriage is complicated, right? And um, of course, um, you know, this is some uh, what do you call? Um, um, there's some channel that um, go around to um, to catch uh, the dirt. What is it? Cash can. What do you, I, you to, I mean, that's, that's some uh, channel, some people <laughs> go out to, to cash the betrayed husband and wife, remember? You know that, that cap channel? Oh, um, were they like, is it wife swap? Wife swap? Oh, no, 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 that's no, the wife swap. Uh, is it catfish? I don't know, no catfish, no. <laughs> Are you saying where they're trying to, they're trying to catch the other person betraying cheating. them? Yeah, cheating. 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 Cheaters. Cheaters. Uh -huh. <laughs> what, what, is, what do you call that? Cheaters. Cheater? Cheaters. Oh, really? Oh, okay. They like sneak around and film the other person and put out some cheese. Check out some cheese. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right? A sum, right? So that's not a problem there. And if so happen, if that phrase talk, I mean they tell, tell your partner, you, you may bring disaster for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think this being mindful because, well, I think that's assuming a lot of power over other people mm -hmm. when you talk about them. You're creating a person who you see and it's not necessarily who that person is, and that can affect their relationships as well with the people you might talk to about the issue. Does, and, does that make sense? Yeah, and plus, even if, especially if you have, if they have, have children. They try to convince the children into their side. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Your dad and your mom so bad and so forth and so forth, right? And you do so every every mm, things that you know about your partners and that really cares in the families. And the children this this in the in between. I don't know which one they go. It's still half of them. Um, but some somehow soon later it may be broke down. So anyway, so uh, let's just move on. So that's why uh, trust and respect is so important if you want to build up a long-term relationship with your partners. Okay, do you have new five, right? Yeah, please. Oh, you, oh, you know four? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's, yeah, I'm you know okay, four. Yeah. You had the exact same thing. Uh, it's just I had a little bit of like, personal experience. In okay. Life, but, yeah, add more. Okay. Well, I mean, um, my family is different. My actual parents were never married, but they're both remarried now. So, but I've lived with my dad and my stepmom forever. So, like, they're pretty much my my parents. And when you talk about like you and your husband, it's like I have big old because it's exactly what my parents do all the time. You know, when I was like, so let's let's get this plan. You have this list. Like, let's do it. And it's like, you know. There's a cell on beer. <laughs> like, that's gonna, you know, I need some of that before I can do some of this. <laughs> so it's like it's an ongoing thing. But I mean, they always work it out. But like watching them interact from someone who's never been married is a little bit intimidating. I think, like relationship-wise, because they they've been together 20 years. So they know exactly what to say to just hit right. The, the right button to make everything just fall apart. But they've been working on it a lot recently, especially my mom, on being mindful of what she says instead of just letting it go to like bite your tongue. And it's made things a lot better. And dad is like also, I guess, refiguring out how my mom needs to be like showing love and like small things go a long way. And just saying I'm sorry is a lot better than ignoring it and just like coming back the next day and acting like it never happened, you know, like, so there, it's, it's an interesting thing, and, I mean, they've never questioned each other's faithfulness, but it's definitely been times where they weren't, their manners weren't <laughs> good, and I, um, have been, like, been cheated on, and it's amazing how much that will impact your trust with everyone, not just that person, but with your friends, your family, like anything else that person says, you you know it's true, you were there with them, but you're like, mm, you know, kind of like iffy about it, and it's even carried over now, but I've had to like remind myself that that's in the past, and it's, if I am with the right people and I surround myself with the right people, it won't happen again, and if I take precautions and just not worry about what happened back a long time ago, It'll be better for me in the long run. Yes. And accept it. <laughs> yeah, especially if uh, one of your partners made mistakes in the past, and you may not respect that. And if you live in, with the past, right? Like you just say that, you would have all doubts about him or her whenever they want to talk, whenever they want to do something. Yeah. You want to say? You want to say something? Oh no, I'm just yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so if we live with the present moment, if we accept, if we recognize the truthfulness of our partner, it's easy for us to move on. Otherwise, if we cling to the past, right? Sometimes 
he or she may cheat you or make mistakes and so forth. You may have to have a respectful attitude. It's not easy to live together. Mm. Okay, so mm, it's not easy when you work together on true trust and respect. No, yes. Just again, maybe I can't get into force, but you know, something about mental health. You know, somebody, you know, like for example, when as a child, you know, it's like postpartum depression. You know, it's like sometimes people have, it's like a, a poison that can mess up the whole thing. And I'm kind of curious uh, how it play. And again, it's not so too early in the course for that. I agree, but I'm just wondering about that. Is this your question or are you coming? That's, that's a question. I mean, it's both. Like, I think, uh, no. Illness can poison uh, the relationship. Uh -huh. And again, sometimes it just snaps, sometimes it's uh, unrecognized. So I'm wondering how mindfulness would handle that. And again, I, I know it's, it's in the, you know, it's further in the course where you can talk about that kind of stuff. So I can wait. But Question. Oh, sure. Any, any response? You don't listen to his question? Um, I think that you're definitely right. That's kind of what I wrote about in mine because I had um, number nine. And I just wrote about like there's all different things that can affect your relationship. And one of them I wrote about was illness, <coughs> mental illness and how it can like put a wall between you and your partner because, especially with mental illness, sometimes you feel like they're not their self. You know, they might be talking weird or they're acting weird or having different emotional reactions than normal. So I think that mindfulness can help because it can remind you to be in the present and not keep comparing them to their past self. Like this is who they are now. They have this mental illness or if they've always had it then they might not always act the same. It might affect them different every day. So you have to take it one day at a time and you have to be mindful of your emotions and how you feel and how you react, and also there is at the same time you have to balance that. The same with needs. They might have different needs than you if they have that mental, that mental illness. They might need more security. They might need you know, more physical help. Um, it's the same with like when you start getting older, sometimes one person in the relationship will start being debilitated by an illness or something. The other person you know, has to make up for that, and make up for their needs, like help them to walk or feed them or whatever. And with Thank you. Yes. Um, well, I've talked about this a little bit in here, but I mean, my mom went through postpartum depression with my older sister, and um, and she's bipolar, and she struggled with depression her whole life, and um, and it it really is debilitating. And I think most marriages um, that involve one partner who has mental illness, or at least I've heard this statistic for people with bipolar, but most of those marriages do end. My dad, I guess because, it might be because, uh, I mean, both my parents don't really believe in divorce, but also I think we, my dad never wanted to leave because his dad left him when he was really young, and so they stayed together. So I've, um, I've seen everything play out over and over and over again, and it's just at this point, like, um, so I guess I'll talk more about, like, me and my mom's relationship instead of my parents, because I don't know if my accepted fully my, my mom and the way that she is and the way that, like, that and just accepted that like she may not change um, and she may like sit on the couch most of the days until things end, I don't know, but I know for me mindfulness has helped because I've been able to accept that that's the way that she is and if you are going to be with somebody who has a mental illness knowing and, and you do want to make it work um, getting your needs somewhere else and when things are good between you and your partner be aware of being a friend and, and also just accept whenever their mental illness does debilitate or cause harm to the relationship accept that it's not personal and it's not about you and then distance yourself and then just 
do what you can, but don't. Um, what I found is don't put all your energy into it because that is so exhausting and it's and it just depletes all of your resources and your happiness. So take care of your own happiness first. Yeah. We talk about that on the number nine, and especially I have seen many, many couples, not only about the mental illness, but also the physical, even physical illness too, right? It's a burden, because when you come together, um, you share, you share your needs, um, you share your resource um, in every aspect of life. Um, this one lady, um, her husband got a stroke and he was in coma for more than three years. They put him in the nursing home every day. She visits him every day uh, to take care of him. Um, that's just not easy to find that kind of dedicated people, right? And I heard some story that uh, one man Somehow he used chainsaw to cut the, the, the wood, and somehow he, he cut his legs. And a few months later, his wife divorced him. So sometimes people could not have that kind of uh, dedication to the partners. Uh, they don't have a kind of patience. They, they listen about themselves much than others. So and this is a lot of problem. We will talk about that number nine. Okay, number five. Anyone know the five? It's easy, right? The five. Uh, mindfulness, mindful, playfulness, and passion. Uh, you want to have a lot of one? Which one do you do? Number seven. Number seven? Number ten? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's all right. Yes, it's common. Some, most of the time, right? You do any number? <laughs> Six. Two. Oh, number two. Oh, you have <laughs> okay. We passed you, right? Uh, okay. Um, you want to say something more about? Yeah. yeah. Um, mostly what I don't know if we talked about this already, but uh, most of what I found was just how to frankly get out of an argument, kind of like if you're um, they're yelling and you're responding with more yelling. It's just going to escalate and get worse and worse. Um, so the best thing to do if you can't calm them down is to just wait. Like, say, let's come back in 20 minutes and then wait. Come back. And then um, just listen to what they have to say. Don't just hear them, but listen. And then just say, I understand what you're saying. It sounds like you had a horrible day. Instead of just trying to fix it. Because not everyone wants you to fix their problems. They just want to be very and then it's always take like a few seconds to respond so you can actually think about what they said and what you're about to say. Mm. Yeah, everything else I have talked about. Okay, how about number five? What do you think? Any one of you? Number five. Playfulness and passion. Sometimes mm, you may have a job, which job, right? Keep some job, right? Or you handsome or whichever to cheer your partner spirit up, right? Otherwise, sometimes it's boring. Uh, so, um, anyone of you? Like, to, yes? Um, like, the other day I went to, um, who was it? I mean, he's not really my boyfriend, but. Mm. <laughs> so, okay. Right, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My mom thinks it's okay, so if that's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, because your mom, not you. <laughs> okay. So right. anyway, we were just kind of sitting around watching TV, not really doing anything productive, and I just wanted to bake. I don't know. I wanted to cook something, and I asked him if he wanted to help me, and he was like all for it. So we made apple crisp together, like completely from scratch. And it was a lot of fun because, I mean, I got to teach him 
something because he doesn't cook often. His mom always did it for him. So now he's on his own. He's like, well, okay, I don't know what to do. So like, I could teach him something, but also like, he helped me because I'm not very good with knives. Like, usually my parents keep them away from me because I'm not bad with them. <laughs> and, and so like, he did like the harder part, and I put everything together, and it was like, it was fun. It was a nice change. It wasn't like all about physical relationships. It wasn't about just sitting and being there. Like we actually got to do something together and that was really nice. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I mean, used to a couple of like, Yeah. Sometimes you uh, you have vacation together? Oh, no. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, no. Oh. No, we've been it's... very been very busy just making it. Oh really? Yeah. Sometimes you need to go out and walk around, right? Uh, and we don't have a lot of things in common, like that we like to do. Like uh, everything I like to do, he doesn't like, and everything he likes to do, I don't like. Uh, so we're still trying to figure out what we can do together, and we've been I'm, together a long time. Yeah. So. I meet away, I meet her out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just being at home, we both like to be at home, and just. But beyond that, I can't. I have no idea. I like to go out to eat. Like he'll go out to eat sometimes. That's one thing. We'll go out to eat. Um, but we're both really picky, and our food that we cook is way better than when we go eat. So oh. that makes it hard because, oh, I see. because you go out to eat, and both of us are disappointed. You might as well just stay home and I me cook, you know, because then at least we both like what we're eating. So it's challenging. Like, I like yes. to watch movies and go dancing and do all sorts of stuff. He likes to go hunting. And, and I. <laughs> I don't mind that he wants, but I don't want to go sit in the woods and wait to kill something. It's not my thing. You know? <laughs> it's his thing, and it's fine. And he likes to ride dirt bikes. I don't, because they're scary and dangerous. And he likes to fish. I don't. I find it boring. You know? so yeah, it's not easy. Because men, men like to do something that's more physical. I can read on the boat, but he never invites me. I told him. I could bring like, a bottle of wine and a book and yeah. a crochet, and I could just kick it on the boat. Yeah. But he never, no, like, he doesn't invite me. And I'd like to offer to uh, learn how to do archery, because he, oh, my, like, well, and he does these little competitions where he shoots. We're like, I can learn how to do archery, that would be fine. But he just is not motivated to bring me to learn that yet, either. Um, again, the basic <laughs> one is the somehow, like you say, that uh, as human, even, the animals, right? They need loves, right? The the uh, the care for each other. That's its basic needs for human. That's why we're here. And of course, besides that, we may have fun with each other, we're cooking together, and so forth. Can we move? Sorry, we have oh, some more. What's the What's the question? I was just gonna make a comment because I scanned the. Um, I like to, to keep uh, calm some. Uh, yeah. Uh, number six? You do number six? Uh, of course, and honesty, again, this is uh, honest and it's related to the choice, too, right? How about courage? What's mean the courage when you have a uh, relationship? When you, when you need to have the micro courage? Uh, I think it takes courage to be honest. Yeah. Especially if you make a mistake, right? And trust, too, respect, too. Yeah, you have to trust the person before you can be honest with them. Yeah. Especially if you like, if you make an error. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least for me, if I make a mistake, it's a lot harder for me to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you have to trust that that person will um, accept you and forgive you once you've made a mistake. Because mm -hmm. everybody makes mistakes, mm -hmm. but not everyone is forgiven. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of challenging, I think, as that's far right. as trust. That's why. So sometimes, even you admit the mistake, but they they do the recording, right? They're talking again and again. This is, they, they play the recorder. You know what I mean? They just, yes. they, they just repeat that quote, that mistake again and again. It's boring for you. And that's why you don't want to talk about your mistake, right? Well, yeah, like if you make a mistake and you have the courage to be honest about it, mm -hmm. and then that person can't forgive you. Mm -hmm. Or they say they do, but then you hear about it like again, again. every three months for twelve years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know. Um, okay. Then you tend to get bitter and resentful, uh -huh. and it makes a wall because yeah. then how can you, if you make another mistake, how could you possibly trust that that person That's would right. actually forgive you? I mean, you can't. 
right? Because you don't know, you know it's always going to come back to you. Okay, let's move on number seven. Yes, please. Uh, romantic relationships as a question and, and respond to relationship stresses. Sure. Yeah. Um, so stress, obviously a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. Me, personally, I think a healthy amount of stress is probably a good thing in a relationship. Um, I mean, I know I've read a lot of research as a psych major, and I know that um, too little stress can lead to boredom and sort of levels of, certain levels of depression. Um, and obviously chronic and constant stress is not good either. I mean, it's mm -hmm. going to have negative health impacts, negative emotional impacts. Um, but sort of like a, a medium amount of stress um, typically will um, sort of keep you on your toes for lack of a better scientific phrase. Um, but anyway, what I read, I read um, two studies that were actually done um, experimentally to test mindfulness with these two variables, which is really interesting. Um, and I know we're running a lot of time, so I'm going to talk about the second one because it's way more interesting. Um, this particular study, they actually brought couples into, well, not necessarily a lab, but a naturalistic setting. And they had them um, basically, well, couples that had experienced meditation before. Um, so they had them meditate for like three or four minutes, and then they had them discuss their day with each other, just like a basic conversation. And then they sort of split them up again and had them um, come up with two like issues that they thought were most problematic in the relationship. And then they meditated again, and they came back together. And then one of them um, mentioned what the issue was, and then they were told to just discuss it and see if they could come up with some kind of solution. Um, and as you might expect, I mean, the results of this survey um, showed that the couples that scored really high on mindfulness had higher levels of satisfaction and lower levels of stress. And they compared those results to the general population, which you would assume would have the same kind of training or experience that they have. Um, so I think it's kind of interesting that they're like actually studying this um, in a like in a real way, like in a real experimental setting to see how this might actually work for people in real life, in real life. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. I've been with my guy forever. I mean, I've known since high school, and we're very opposite. Like, he's actually the planner, and I'm not. So, <laughs> okay. like, I'll, like, kind okay. of uh, shake him up a little bit, and he'll, like, reel me back in, and I'm getting a little too crazy. Yeah. So it works. It is interesting. Okay. This is very helpful. Sometimes you may be stressed out to satisfy your partner's needs, right? And so it depends upon your uh, mindful way of life, how much you can satisfy, uh, how much you understand and recognize their needs. Okay, let's move on. This one, number eight, this is how to cultivate wisdom and compassion in marital relationship. Again, it's, it's, common, it's common sense, right? You have to understand. You have to have that kind of wisdom to understand their needs. Um, you have to have compassion. Why they sick? Why they exalted? Why they anger, angry? With that kind of understanding, with that kind of compassionate, you could not live together, right? Um, so, so that's just why this is, uh, that's why uh, wisdom and compassion is so important. Let me go briefly about this bright heart mindful concept relationship. I go back to your question here. Let me just click here. Here, how do you know if a relationship is worth improving or saving? Here it says, if you make commitment together, just marriage and or living together, it's, it's worthy. If you have children together, sometimes the parents live together because of their children. They, they may not have much passion for each other anymore. But because of the two case, I mean, yeah. okay. Uh, if there is no abuse, physical, physical abuse, mental abuse, um, sometimes this is not easy. Mm. Uh, if there are no actual addition and person that is, I call it uh, addict is, is pursuing on own recovery. Sometimes it's hard. If one of the partner gets some kind of even gambling, right? Smoking, drinking, and so forth. It's not easy for the party to follow. If both agree, <coughs> uh, 
on the most important thing of life would be similar moral and value, not goal, value, value of life. What do you want to achieve for your life in the, in the, in the value way? Right, so these are. That's why. That's why. If we have this kind, if we fulfill this kind of question, we would to try ourselves to save that, to protect that, right? Um, to uh, minimize the conflicts, to find out the common routes, a middle routes, and even one go to the east, one go to the west, like in, in your in your case, right? And and if you say, like you say, if both you go to the the Russian sometimes it's boring. But when you go to different direction, you need to find out middle route, middle way to compromise. Okay, so let us say for the last one with you, please. You can do the last one. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I guess a lot of what I focus on is kind of worry about what Enhance, we are. Yeah. Talk about just, I mean, I just kind of focus on like how to, I guess I'm more focused on how to enhance the relationship yeah. um, by the principles. You know, you got to kind of align your, um, I guess, likes and dislikes and kind of have a give and take relationship there, you know. Um, and I think it's all about a, a big part of it, kind of enhancing the relationship, is just um, really listening, I think, to your partner and kind of learning, like, it's almost like studying them, like, learn their likes, dislikes, their needs. And really, kind of actively, um, I guess, actively be a learner of um, them instead of just like you know get married and say oh I already know them so we'll just you know let's cruise along so um, yeah uh, like I said a lot of the other stuff that we kind of already talked about but that's uh, kind of how I found um, with best the best enhanced relationship. Yeah. yeah, since we don't have much time to talk more, thank you. So I think uh, let's just stop today and let's move on to the next uh, class on which Wednesday. Parents and children. Okay, so um, you get the So here, this this kind of uh, this is this is a big table in, in our daily life, right? And there's many people, they get stuck. Uh, especially with the spouse, and sometimes. Uh, so you are parents, and but most of you are not. So, but you are going to be soon. <laughs> how, how soon? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go. Um, okay. We have ten. Number two. Yes. What's the number one? Mm, yes. What do you, what number you like to have? It's three. Three, okay. Mm. <laughs> Jessica, right? Yes. Three. Which number you like? Oh, number two. Okay, number two. <laughs> okay, which number you like? Um, all right. Um, let's do four. Yeah, four. Yes. Okay, four. <laughs> How about you? Seven. Seven. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Five. Five? Yes. Okay. You get number? You have your experience parents now. <laughs> you just share more. Which one? Nine. Nine, okay. All right, thank you. So I think this will more the resident and be prepare for you. Be future parents. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's just a scary thought. It's scary? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay. Yeah. I've already told right. my mom that she'll have to rely on my sister for the whole eight grandkids and the happiness part of life. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she laughed at me and told me, well, you'll just wait. Give it a few